The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, we're up, uh, is that right, four? It's been bouncing around here. Let me update this. Okay, we're up four points on the S&P cash after being down uh, around 10 on the open. Uh, Dow's up 47, NASDAQ's up 10, Russell's up three. Um, but uh, again, uh, I don't put a lot of long-term uh, into these days, either options expiration or the two days that follow it with options at rollover. Of course, this is the most important rollover uh, season of the year as it takes us all the way through Christmas. So as they start adding on uh, the uh, longer term options, uh, 30, 60, 90 days. Um, you know, I haven't looked at leaps in about five years. I wonder if they even still have them. Those were one-year options, but I think those went the way of the dodo. I'll have to check on that. I don't think that the, they got so expensive that it was ridiculous, and I never looked at them again. I think all the people that wrote them around 2007 and 8 went bankrupt, and uh, eh, that was probably, they may still exist. I do not know. I haven't looked. Uh, did a lot of work over the weekend trying to come up with some kind of edge for this week's of trading, and I got nothing. And that's not a bad thing. At least you know. In fact, my models may be better at predicting flat spots in the market uh, than anything else. But uh, certainly right now, uh, Monday and Tuesday, we've got options roll over. If today's up a little bit, then 80% of the time tomorrow is going to be down a little bit. Uh, Wednesday is the first day we get moving. And, of course, um, we've got fun buying that actually starts most of the time. It would start on Friday. Uh, the pattern for funds have been, though, to wait and not buy into the weekends, but wait until Monday. And I think this weekend will be uh, just that. Uh, there is a uh, fairly decent order of battle that says you don't go into uh, a, a new operation on a moonlit night. And, of course, uh, we get to this weekend, we get to the full or the uh, new moon. And if there's going to be any kind of military action, normally going to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, probably Sunday or, uh, or Saturday night. Uh, and, of course, if you got stealth aircraft, eh, it's great that uh, you can't be seen on radar. But uh, if you're silhouetted against the moon, eh, not such a great deal either. Uh, so we'll imagine or I will imagine that we will uh, know by next Monday. And if nothing happens over the weekend, I suspect we're probably going to have a big relief rally in the market. And, of course, that takes us into October anyway. Fun buying. we got a lot of other stuff. But uh, the uh, legion of people that have been predicting the end of the world, not just markets moving higher and lower, but literally all kinds of gnashing and wailing of teeth. I may have not gotten that quote correct. Um, I don't see in the charts. Of course, charts only show what everybody knows. They don't show what people don't know. Years ago, uh, before the earth cooled and dinosaurs uh, roamed the earth, there was a lot of leaks out of company earnings. Well, they put a kind of the kibosh on that starting at about 2003 because everybody was leaking everything. Is worse than Washington, D.C. So what do we have? Uh, we've got a market that's continually gotten tighter and tighter with fewer and fewer cues as we got into options expiration. And I mean, uh, earnings season. We're just starting to warm that uh, up. In fact, it's at least you get a few weeks off. Before, it was one of these things where you didn't 
uh, have any time off, at least a handful or the bigger stocks are now uh, pretty much accumulating into about a month and a half, giving us a month and a half off before they actually restart in earnest again. So we're getting just the kind of the first drops of those uh, starting later this week and next week and into the other one. But uh, and by the uh, you know, first week of October at that ends, we're going to start ramping back up all the way through uh, mid-November. Uh, mid uh, then we wait back and just get it started all over again about mid-January. So look for that six-week cycle where we we actually get to rest a little bit. There may be uh, individual companies coming out with news, but there's not enough to actually move the market or set everybody up uh, into thinking that the market's going to heaven or hell. So as we start to show off today, as I said, not much going on. Volume's fairly weak. Again, um, normally we get Fridays with light volume and Mondays with light volume in the fall. All we've had so far uh, since the three-day weekend is really a light Monday. Uh, 3.2 billion shares as we start the show. And, of course, uh, when you look at some of the other stuff, uh, it just doesn't seem like we're breaking out of the range. There was a, a brief window where it looked like maybe the dollar would move back down into the 96s. Uh, did it for all of a day into the high 97s and popped right back. Uh, we're up, uh, about 15 cents today at 98 uh, 28. And of course, when you look at the indexes today, which I have to get back to now, uh, oil's up about 40 cents. As I said, I am not a fan of being short oil as long as the Baker Hughes numbers continue to come in light. And man, they came in very light on Friday, which would add additional support uh, to the oil market's pricing, keeping them up uh, as we continue on. Of course, natural gas. I, it is hard for me to see natural gas come uh, up to anything uh, that I've heard where a lot of people are saying it's back, going to go back up to four bucks. It could, but man, are you going to have to have some horrible conditions for a long time to uh, get that back up, both in production and in the consumption. So if you're thinking that uh, we're going down to minus 50 all winter long, maybe there's a chance, but man, it seems to be if we hit three bucks, uh, right now, I think that's fairly high in natural gas for this fall. Uh, to, to, to what else do we have going on? Gold's up uh, 15, 16 bucks. Uh, what is that? Uh, 1531. So you got a little bounce back in here, but at the moment, I suspect we're going to consolidate for a while in gold. Uh, not a uh, message that a lot of people want to hear if they're gold bulls. Uh, up. Uh, 83 cents, almost 83 and a half cents on silver at 1868.50. Probably the worst thing that I think can happen to gold is everybody yelling about buying it. And there certainly this weekend was everybody that uh, I could find was all bullish on gold. And generally, when you get uh, gold really runs, it's when nobody's bullish on it. So consolidation more than likely. Copper up uh, not even a penny today, twenty or two dollars and sixty one cents. We'll be back after this. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And it is, uh, what else? Oh, well, we're still out here, just up three points. I don't suspect a lot's going to happen. Um, again, pretty bad time to be trading. Uh, Wednesday, probably a day where we're going to see a lot more signal than noise. Uh, as I routinely say, today is a lot of noise and very little signal. Uh, you'll get just the opposite 80% of the time tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. Um, but Wednesday, you know, I can imagine that we have uh, consolidation all the way through the uh, week, maybe 2960. If we could get back down there on low volume, that'd probably be another good opportunity uh, to go long in the market. I'm pretty much all cash and pretty happy about it. Um, the uh, And there's too many sitting right at uh, fail levels right now uh, to make me think anything's going on. If they can just hang on, though, through this week, uh, it'll be a fairly bullish signal. But we really need to wait till next week until we start seeing I think a lot of that uh, bullish uh, bias in the market. Uh, what else do we have out here? Oh, let's do a little history and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is nothing but history repeating. And on this day, in fact, uh, let's do that. In 1779, the U.S. ship Bonham Richard, commanded by John Paul Jones, wins a hard-fought engagement against the British ships of war, Serapis and Countess of Scarborough, off the eastern coast of England. With the outbreak of the American Revolution, 1775, he traveled to Philadelphia and was commissioned as a senior lieutenant in the United uh, in the uh, uh, Continental Navy. Soon distinguished himself in actions against the British ships in the Bahamas the Atlantic Ocean, and the English Channel. And, of course, um, one of the uh, battles of all time where his ship was sinking and he still uh, decided, was able to uh, conquer two other ships, uh, take them uh, captive, and uh, ride away with his ship, uh, and, or ride away with their ships, uh, and his ship sunk the next day. And, uh, you know, he ended up uh, kind of bopping around after the... Uh, that uh, for a while, and I think it was in maybe 1905, they found his body 
after a huge uh, uh, fit by the uh, uh, ambassador of France, dug up his body and uh, found it and uh, returned it to Arlington Cemetery. And uh, one of the heroes uh, when we had to kick the limeys out of America on this day in 1779. Um, what else is going on? I wanted to look at some charts here today. Uh, the first one, in fact, uh, was we'll talk about it because Friday after the bell, some new laws uh, trying to get passed in New York City uh, that I thought were very interesting. Let's go ahead and update this chart just in case there's any chance. Uh, we're talking about all the uh, laws uh, changing in California and New York already and some of the other uh, Massachusetts um, about uh, employee status for Lyft and Uber. Uh, what has changed now in New York City is that a lot of these guys uh, drive their Uber cars around uh, and Lyft cars around, but it's cheaper to drive them than to actually park them. Uh, so uh, they just drive them around, and at least uh, the people from New York City say they're con adding congestion in the street. I don't know how they add any more congestion in the street than cabs did before. But guess what? You uh, go public, you got a bunch of money. Suddenly, there's a lot of people with their hands out. Uh, so both Lyft and Uber uh, finding uh, every time they turn around, uh, a little bit more people out there with a the hand out. Uh, you had a little bit more of a dip today, 3206 for the low in Uber. You've got uh, $30.67, which is the September 3rd low. You're into that candle with about a you know, what, you know, fourth and a third of the volume right now. So that a lot of times may need be all you need. Chart doesn't really look that bad. Uh, I would say, though, that it's just uh, something uh, on the way to happening, and that is that uh, these big cities are going to look at Uber and uh, Lyft as uh, funding mechanisms for their city. Uh, long as they did as uh, the regular cabs were uh, before, uh, just a way to uh, eh, kind of get your hand out there, get your your beak wetened, as we say from the uh, Godfather. But uh, certainly those come under uh, attack. Um, there's a engineer uh, from uh, Facebook uh, who was recently fired. Uh, because he used social media. Uh, imagine that. <laughs> we, we, we don't like you using social media. It, it will confuse people. They told him that he couldn't say that he worked for Facebook, so he said he was a former Google tech lead, and they've canned him. Well, <laughs> he's become uh, kind of that, uh, what's that guy, uh, Ronan, uh, digging up uh, dirt where they do not like it. Uh, for Facebook. Uh, anyway, uh, a lot of discussions about uh, what's going on in Facebook. Uh, sounds just like out of the Politburo of the Soviet Union. Uh, you can't speak the truth, can't do anything. Anyway, very interesting uh, inside look at the bureaucracy and the uh, downright nitwitty, uh, bat, uh, fruit bat crazy uh, political factions uh, where nothing is getting done at Facebook. Apparently, at least uh, that is his story. Uh, but it seems to be rather backed up by other folks in that uh, in that same uh, company. And of course, uh, on Friday after the close, we heard that uh, one of the engineers jumped off the top of the building. He says that that is just a drop in the bucket as to what's going on in the uh, nuttiness at Facebook. Uh, also on Friday, uh, you had. Uh, Zuckerberg, maybe even Thursday and Friday, talking to a lot of the congressmen and senators, uh, trying to uh, get uh, and find some way to uh, not uh, be broken apart. Uh, a rather cool reception for uh, the head of Facebook. Uh, but not only that, a lot of demands uh, and a court case, of course, the most interesting part of the court case is that Facebook is no longer trying to play both sides of the fence. They are solidly saying that they are a publisher. So as a publisher, guess what? They can be sued for anything that they put on their sites. And 
anything that others put on their site. So uh, let the games begin. Uh, my guess is that Facebook will be one giant lawsuit after another in the near future, uh, much less all the Federal Trade Commission issues and the uh, monopoly and antitrust issues, uh, besides just being a horrible place to encourage narcissists uh, to come around. And uh, probably the more interesting part of the, the story from the inside guy is just how much uh, that uh, it's become uh, almost the kind of uh, cliche high school environment with everybody trying to uh, suck up to everybody else uh, in the company, not because it's the right thing to do, but because uh, the bureaucracy has taken over. Anyway, interesting uh, stuff on Facebook, which I'm fairly bearish on. We'll be back after this. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Go get them, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're back. We'll check in on the indexes and I'll nod off here. Uh, let's update them just to make sure they're still moving. I'll poke it with a stick. Okay, we're up three points on the S&P cash. Dow's up 40. NASDAQ's up seven. Russell's up three. Um, what else do we have going on that I want to look at? Uh, just not much to, to hang your hat on. Let's go ahead and look at some of the other ones uh, that are out here. Uh, pretty much uh, the early morning was dominated by some uh, small upgrades and downgrades that don't really change anything. Uh, but... Uh, had a little lower push on Amazon today, 
Uh, it's just down with uh, 2.1 million shares. Again, really doesn't get into this uh, low, but looks like it could at 1743.51. I don't see any reason why you would touch it until it touches and tests that lower uh, low or that low itself. Uh, Chewy's, uh, we've been kind of pushing this one down on uh, some rather rough talk uh, on the street about Chewy. Uh, it's been down on some decent volume today, just a doji out sideways, so I don't see much on that. Uh, Credit Suisse uh, gap down, and uh, I guess there's some more discussions about what's going on in uh, all of Europe. I think uh, what the DAX was down almost, almost a percent today, as was, uh, as was the uh, Shanghai, I think. Uh, you've got two gaps that could get filled down here to about $11.75. Uh, FLIR, which is a uh, forward-looking infrared radar. Did I do that right? Yeah, floor systems. Getting back up to this gap, they announced um, a whole series of cameras for people on pleasure boats and actually on uh, uh, full-size shipping lanes uh, that can see through fog, that kind of stuff. Uh, kind of an interesting application, anywhere from seven grand at the bottom to about 25 grand. So these should be some nice cameras to add to their uh, already pretty huge system for airplanes and uh, static systems uh, in the military. This kind of adds a, a new level for people, boats like me, uh, or boaters like me that would like. Seven grand is kind of steep but uh, probably much better than uh, running aground or into another ship. And it's nice that you can see through fog. Uh, anyway, this is going back into this huge gap down with two and a half million shares back from uh, uh, to, to, to July 24th. Uh, and of course, uh, that two and a half million shares just hasn't had much of a push. Even today, just uh, 222,000 shares so far today. Uh, Lulu, yeah, some kind of upgrade, downgrade thing didn't seem to go very far. Um, this actually looked fairly good. You had a good gap higher on the 6th of August, 6th of August, 6th of September, uh, with 11 million shares. You've been filling that gap over a number of days. Um, you went into that with a, a fourth of the volume of 2.4 million shares on Friday. Today, you have a little bounce, but uh, the volume is not really following it so far. Sam's beer. Uh, do, 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 and just slow, 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 slow. Come on. Can't we get the volume going? There we go. Uh, do, 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 um, not much of a bounce on this one either, although it, it's a previous support level of 353 got to 344.86 on Friday. It's back into the trading range. Doesn't look that bad bad, and of course, nothing better than cereal malt beverages. Uh, uh, some very vicious downgrades today uh, in uh, Slack. W-O-R-K is the symbol for that one. I'm not exactly sure why everything is moving so slowly today, but it certainly is. Uh, we talked with uh, Tom O'Brien in the Tech Insider Hour when this came out, how you have to separate a very good product from the company and its ability to actually make money or monetize what it's doing. Uh, the only good thing down here is you're back into the previous low at $23.93. Uh, that had 30 million shares. You're into it with 5.3 million shares today. Now, it looks like uh, you could close below that. We'll have to see how the day ends. Uh, but any close back above 23.93 actually suggests that there may be some kind of short-term low in slack. Uh, the problem I have about uh, shorting it after this uh, is the possibility of a buyout, which does exist. So uh, if you shorted this thing at the uh, IPO at about 40 bucks and you got down to 24, congratulations. Here's where the risk really starts picking up, and that is this test of a low on lighter volume. And you're basically through, uh, or when's the uh, lockup period? What's take a look at that because we want to talk about it. Uh, 
let me find it here. Okay. Um, no, that's not what I wanted. I wanted lock update. Period. See when this thing actually gets out of it. Uh, oh, come on, where are you at? Okay, let's just see if we can't get it on this. Because uh, they've changed the NASDAQ website. They used to have... Slack. Uh, what is it? Uh, lock up date. Okay. Did, uh, they received... Okay. 180 days from May 31st, so that's six months. So that'd be the end of the year. Here it is. Finally got it, 1217. Okay, so that gets you far enough into Christmas that it's going to be pretty tough. That's a good time to start a uh, IPO because then your lockups happen where not many people around and the market's fairly thin. It makes it very hard for insiders to sell makes it very hard for outsiders to short. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, 1217. Um, you probably would not look at a buyout before the lockup ex expiration. Um, but after that, it becomes problematic. Uh, let's see what they have for short interest. And because uh, that new stuff came out. Because I think everybody's been all over this, and they have. We've had days of one out of four uh, uh, trades being short. So fairly high short interest. See if we've got anything else. Yeah, they're not really publishing it quite yet. But um, the daily data does suggest fairly high short interest. At some days, uh, it's been 32% back on the 6th of August. So uh, you're going to be building a fairly large short interest in Slack. If you can find the right low, kind of like Snap, uh, you can make some fairly decent money. Take a look at Snap here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. Uh, sure. I've been waiting for you to speak about the huge climate initiatives. I don't know what you want me to comment on. You've got to say something more. Yeah, we're going to the break. Maybe uh, we'll follow up that question with a little bit more detail. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And what else? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay. And just see if there's anything moving out here. Uh, okay. Well, we're right back to it. Uh, Twenty nine ninety five up three points on the S and P cash volume is a light at uh, and three and a half billion shares. So if nothing happens before the end of the day to get going, we're going to have a very light, slightly higher day up three points again. I'm not putting a lot of weight in today into tomorrow, other than what options are going to tell us. Uh, is going to be very important. Of course, the markets really don't get moving again till Wednesday. Most of the time, if today's an up day, then generally tomorrow is the is a down day of equal uh, or around equal performance. So that would say fairly light. Wednesday, the stock market kind of gets back into gear after rolling off all the options that expired from last week and putting on and adding and starting to sell options uh, all the way through Christmas. So just kind of a quiet couple of days most of the time. Uh, a lot of times it's a lot of noise that people uh, attribute uh, the uh, attribute signal to, uh, if I would say that. I got another question. Uh, do I still suspect that uh, Warren has an 80 percent chance of winning the Democratic nom uh, nomination? I think it went to... 90 or 95 over the weekend. I think she's, uh, it's hers to lose now by a long margin. Um, and no big deal other than uh, elections have consequences. And if we can all uh, sanely discuss uh, not what's right and wrong, but uh, higher and lower uh, prices based on whatever issues that come out of politics. So we'll take a deep breath, uh, just my opinion, but uh, probably opinion based on some experience. Uh, okay, what else do we have in the questions? Question over the weekend uh, about uh, 5G and, of course, uh, a lot of morons, and I'll just call them flat-out morons, uh, in Europe, uh, running around saying 5G is going to hurt us. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, issue. Um, well, I know those folks didn't even make it through high school physics where they would understand the difference between ionizing radiation and uh, non-ionizing radiation. And uh, yeah, it, it kind of basically the theory is uh, that if I had a spitball and shot it at a at a locomotive, I could knock it over. That's basically the argument that people against 5G have right now, and that is that some incredibly small amount of non-ionizing radiation could actually cause problems. Uh, the truth of the matter is that the water in your skin is enough to stop it. It's not going to get into you or cause any problems. But you know what? As I said a little earlier in the day I, to somebody, uh, I think the world's just gone fruit bat crazy. 
and I wanted to use another word, but I'll use fruit bat, crazy. Uh, it, it's black helicopter time all the time. It's uh, nutty beliefs and uh, predictions of the end. Um, it's just, these things eventually wear themselves out when everybody uh, gets tired after about the 10th time of saying uh, that, the, uh, that the apocalypse is tomorrow or that, that everything else is going to go to hell in a handbag. Uh, but not new. Uh, people feel powerless and they express themselves in ways uh, that don't make uh, either economic and or uh, any kind of uh, rational, uh, non-mentally ill way, let me put it that way. Uh, <laughs> so that's easy. Anyway, we can go that. Anyway, we looked at everything I wanted to look at. So let's go ahead and look at some of the other stuff. NFLX uh, didn't win some uh, Emmys. And of course, I have one in my uh, wonderful, uh, uh, what do you call them, uh, lockbox at the bank where I keep mine, uh, but I would not watch the shows anymore, just too depressing. Uh, but uh, mine's a technical Emmy given the week before that the regular Emmys are given. So uh, I never got to do that. The only good part was that Jerry Lewis gave me mine because he won one back in like 1968 or five or something. He was the first person, person to put a TV camera on a movie camera so that he could watch uh, everything that happened uh, in his all the movies he made in the 60s. And uh, he, I think he was the first one. They opened up that category just to give it, which is a technical Emmy, uh, adding to the production and production values of that. So that's what my Emmy for my product, the personal animation recorder, and the uh, all the uh, products that came after that in the 90s, kind of a, uh, a uh, what would you call it? It's like a TiVo for animators, a way to get uh, computer animation and video out of a computer and uh, onto, at that time, analog tape. Uh, but uh, we've moved very far since then. Uh, so what do we have in Netflix? Down uh, 11 million shares uh, compared to uh, 24 million share on Friday. Uh, I thought that gap would potentially hold. Uh, some people saying, hey, uh, as I said, I quit subscribing to them. There just wasn't a lot on here that I wanted to watch, and I thought the stuff on Amazon was better. And, of course, Amazon did walk away with a few more uh, Emmys last night than most people thought. That may be for a little bit of the weakness. You don't have a lot of volume today. That does still open up the 231.23 low. And with Hulu and Disney and everybody else coming into this space that uh, never really had a big moat, um, I was always worried about what you could do at that high. And you had a fairly good, decent test of the 385.99 high that had 10 million shares. You got into it with less than seven. Uh, that was the May 1st. Uh, compared to the July 9th high. So you had a test at the top. You did it on lighter volume. Uh, you're coming back down. Now, the, is the energy any uh, any higher than the uh, December 26, 2018 up to the May high? No, it's actually just a little less, but you've had some fairly decent gaps back down. Um, kind of reminds me of the Tesla chart uh, where you had uh, Tesla coming up to uh, 379 back on December 7th, a day that will live in infamy 2018. Uh, that 380 high with 11 million shares never really got tested. He got into close to it on 352 on January 26, and that's about all she wrote. Um, we were short, I think that's the first time we shorted it at 345 in that area in the Tech Insider and wrote it down to about. Uh, to, what was it, 230, 240, something like that. Um, I think this is going to have another 100-point move down. It's just when. I like this thing to go sideways for a while. In the meantime, hang on. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found the computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And yeah, we're back. Got uh, our last little segment here. Um, make sure and give me a call tomorrow. This has been a quiet day. Maybe you've got some questions uh, that are percolating in your fine brains. Uh, and, of course, you can call me at 877-927-6648. But think of some questions. I think tomorrow's probably going to be kind of a light day, too. Wednesday, we're probably going to get back to a steel cage grudge match in the market at Bulls against the Bears. But until then, uh, start thinking of some questions for tomorrow. Uh, gold's up $16.80, oil up $0.47. Cents. Um, again, not much has happened in there, kind of slowing down. Got a kind of question about TLT coming in via email, which I think is just a fad, TLT, fad of 40 years. Um, TLT, yeah, you're getting back up to the, uh, the movements down. You didn't get much into today. Um, you know, I just like to see that half the gap gets filled. So probably maximum resistance level uh, is about 146 in the TLT, and that's where I would look. It could fail right now. Uh, it came down with massive volume, uh, but uh, the risk reward really doesn't come in until about 145 ish, 146 ish. You'd like it to get up there with no volume. Uh, well, like on the 10th of September, you were down on 
13.9 million shares. Uh, you got about uh, 11 million shares, so not all that bad. But uh, you need to get into some of these gaps that had 15, you know, get 15, yeah, 15.9 million shares on the 9th of September. So yeah, you're close, but my guess is this is where you're going to start having a lot of people uh, jump up and down and think that they'll be able to get out of this uh, bronking bowl. You've got two highs. Uh, you don't need any more. You tested the previous high with 50% lighter volume on August 28th. That's everything you need to know about that. This is an a market that is at best consolidating and worst heading much lower. We'll be back tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.